the Special Operations Combat Diver Qualification Course, or CDQC, also known as Dive School or Scuba School, is one of the hardest and most respected schools in the global special operations community. Let's take a look at the CDQC using seven criteria. Duration and phasing, physical training, harassment, sleep, food, and performance measures. The CDQC is located in Key West, Florida, off of the tip of Fleming Key. Here is an aerial photo, the welcome sign, and a picture of the facility. Let's get started with duration and phases. When I went through this course, we did it in two phases, pre-scuba and scuba. Pre-scuba school is two weeks long and scuba school is six weeks long. Most Green Berets go through pre-scuba back at their home unit and then they fly down to Florida for the CDQC. The year I went through was kind of an anomaly because I went through both phases at the Special Forces Underwater Operations School. Days at pre-scuba are as follows. Lung crushing morning PT, then you have breakfast. Three to four hours in the pool practicing CDQC skills. These skills include proper side stroke techniques, proper kicking techniques, also known as finning, drown proofing, ditching and donning your gear, tying certain knots underwater, swimming 50 meters underwater in one breath, treading water without using your hands, a weight belt swim, and many more. After lunch, you will spend three to four more hours in the water. Sometimes you're in a pool practicing the previously mentioned skills, but most of the time you are at the local lake or ocean conducting 500 to 3,000 meter swims to get the students used to swimming long distances in open water. After dinner you have free time. At pre-scuba your evenings and weekends are free. Once you pass pre-scuba you are eligible to go to the CDQC. During the first day of the CDQC, you will have a high standards fitness test and then you will go to the pool where the instructors systematically test you on all of the skills that you have mastered during pre-scuba. If you fail to complete one of these skills, you are given a retest. If you fail a second time, you are sent home. I respect the fact that by lunch on the first day of the CDQC, we had already tested out of every skill we practiced a thousand times over at pre-scuba. It was now game on, time to learn and master more complicated pieces of equipment to include twin 80s and the Draeger rebreather. At the CDQC your typical day looks like this. Lung crushing PT. Breakfast. Three to four hours in a pool. This is either training, PT, or harassment, or all of the above. Then you have lunch, which is usually followed by an afternoon class while your food digests. This would usually be maritime navigation, dive tables, maritime wildlife for safety, followed by an open water navigation dive, usually 1,000 to 3,000 meters. Then you have dinner, followed by a nighttime open water navigation dive, which is typically 1,000 to 3,000 meters. Late nights and weekends are free at the CDQC. Let's move on to physical training. As you're probably figuring out, you do a lot of exercising at the Combat Diver Qualification Course. I remember the morning PT at scuba school being the hardest PT of my life. After breakfast, we spent three to four hours in the pool. Every minute of it was physically demanding. After lunch, we would do a 1,000 to 3,000 meter open water navigation dive. And for the last month of the school, we did a 1,000 to 3,000 meter open water nighttime navigation dive after sunset. This is basically six to eight hours of high intensity exercising every day. Here is a picture of what we call twin 80s, the scuba system you use for the first few weeks of the CDQC. The 80 is because it holds 80 cubic feet of air. Each 80 cubic feet tank weighs 14 kilos, so the rig weighs about 28 kilos or 61 pounds empty. You carry these twin 80s everywhere. You do push-ups with them on, you do lunges with them on, you do flutter kicks while strapped to them. It's lots of fun. Let's move on to harassment. Looking back, the school was very professional. Although it certainly was not a gentleman's course, it wasn't constant, stupid harassment like you get at ranger school. If someone in the class made a mistake, we would all be punished with push-ups or flutter kicks. 
I specifically remember two Navy SEAL guest instructors who loved the number 83. So the rule was that each time we screwed up, we would do 83 four count flutter kicks. That was always miserable. Worse yet was when the dive instructors caught a safety violation that should have been identified and corrected by the student's dive buddy. The punishment for this was always 20 to 45 minutes of working out. Let's move on to sleep. Because you have your evenings and your weekends free, the wise person takes advantage of every spare minute to allow his body to rest. I tried to go to bed the second the night dives were over and got at least 12 hours of sleep every Saturday and Sunday. Let's move on to food. Immediately following 9-11, a patriotic cook at a local five-star hotel quit his job and took a position as the head cook at the Special Forces Underwater Operations School dining facility. I'm not sure if he's there today, but when I went through, the food was absolutely delicious. Overall, the dining facility was a lifesaver. You could eat as much as you wanted with almost zero harassment. That meant I ate as much food as I could possibly stuff in for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. We were also allowed to take a little food to our barracks rooms after dinner, so I always did. I set my alarm for 2 in the morning. I would wake up and eat a triple decker peanut butter and jelly sandwich a yogurt, some chocolate chip cookies, and drink some milk. Back then, I wasn't very smart about my diet. I was just happy to have a few hundred more calories in my body. It is easy for students to get worn out at the CDQC. This makes you prone to injury and is exactly why you must take advantage of every available calorie and every minute of available rest. Sadly, if you do get an injury during the CDQC, you will likely get kicked out because you're not able to continue making the high standards. And this takes us to performance measures. During day one at the CDQC, you will have a high standards physical fitness test. You are also tested on all of your pre-scuba skills like drown proofing, ditching and donning your gear, knots, swimming 50 meters in one breath, treading water without using your hands, finning with a 16 pound weight belt, and many more. Students must pass a training iteration known as one-man competency or the one-man comp test. I don't want to give away too many details concerning how this works, but I will say that you are given a blacked out mask so you can't see anything and are flipped upside down, abused, harassed, and have to deal with dozens of equipment malfunctions underwater. This is a very important test which validates that combat divers do not panic underwater but instead will use approved troubleshooting techniques to get their underwater breathing apparatuses functioning again. After doing this as an individual, you will then have to go through this exercise with your dive buddy. Fun fun. As I mentioned earlier, morning PT at the CDQC was the hardest PT of my life. Making it worse, every run had a time standard. The day before graduation, we ran the entire circumference of Key West, which is 9 miles, for a pass-fail event. This wasn't ranger school where you have to do a five mile run in 40 minutes during the first week of training. This is a nine mile formation run at the same speed the day before graduation. Every daytime and nighttime open water navigation dive is graded. This means that you have to use a glow in the dark compass and your flutter kick pace count to navigate to a pre-designated location. Points are deducted for every meter you are off to the left or right of the objective. All of these dives have non-negotiable time standards. I want to point out that every open water swim or navigational dive was in full uniform. This isn't jump into the ocean in a speedo and goggles and swim back to the shore. This is jump off a boat one to two miles from shore, get your bearings, go subsurface, and kick or fin as hard as you can until you hit your objective. You better be on time. The CDQC has several academic tests to ensure that you are a master of using the U.S. Navy dive tables for planning dives and for minimizing the chance of getting a pressure-related injury. You will finish off the course with a high-stress pass-fail final mission. Scuba diving is inherently dangerous. Even if you are a civilian diver taking selfies with the fishies, maritime wildlife, propellers, equipment malfunctions, and pressurized air kill people all of the time. Now let's add in a few more military specific variations. Time constraints, bubbleless oxygen rebreather systems, combat equipment, weapons, unpermissive maritime environments, unpermissive military environments, 
doing your missions in a team at night. Military underwater operations are no fail events. Whether you are working in ice cold water, ports where the water tastes like gasoline, or on nights so dark you can't see the hand in front of your face, being a special forces combat diver is not fun and games, but it is rewarding. Thankfully, the CDQC prepared me well for being on my dive team. Okay, so there you have it, a brief explanation about how hard is the Special Forces Combat Diver Qualification course. I am proud to have been the Distinguished Honor Graduate of my CDQC. I don't tell you this to be arrogant, but to demonstrate that I know how to train and perform as an elite athlete, second to none. So if you're looking for an unconventional physical challenge, or to get into world-class shape, then check out my Special Operations Fitness Program. Details are in the comments. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and to forward to a friend who needs to know this.